Not that. She okay. said that you enjoyed uh, Dr. Ford's more than you did. Ah, uh, so I'm not. Yeah. You're live. All right, we're live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the, another session of the of the village. Um, I'm Roger Daly. I am your host. Joining me is Dr. 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 Joanne Bryant, our co-hostess, and Dr. John L. Sampson, our co-host. Welcome to the village where we're dedicated to empowering the community to live a healthy, safe, and financially capable life through education, helping each one of us in realizing our dreams at any age, any point, starting from today. Let's start with Dr. Sam Dr. Sampson. How are you doing, sir? I am blessed, highly favored, and so appreciative just to be on the program today with Mr. Daly and Dr. Bryant. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. How are you doing, Dr. Bryant? Hey, doing great, thank God. I am alive and I'm okay, so I can't take that away. And you're here. Right. Yes, I yeah. am. That's important. That's very important. You know, it, it's 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 really excited, uh, exciting to be uh, to be on the show, uh, enjoying life. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, I was very much stuck. I was stuck stuck in a meeting. Uh, I really wanted to be on. But I wasn't able to be on because I was just stuck in a in a meeting for a while, um, an important meeting nonetheless. But regardless, I, I missed you guys uh, last week. But um, you know, I, I'm excited to be here and excited to join join everyone and having a conversation and ensuring that uh, I'm with my villagers. And thank you, villagers, for all your support, all of your your conversation over a long period of time, um, uh, over the years, and everything else that is involved with that. Uh, and happy birthday. Oh, start off the show by stating that I am a new grandpa. Congrats. Yeah, I, Congrats. I just became a grandpa uh, on Sunday morning. Bouncing baby girl. So my grandpa. Oh, a girl in the family. Yes, 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 yes. All right. We broke broke the streak of boys. Yeah. Son did what you couldn't do. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, Dr. Forbes. Son did what he couldn't do. <laughs> well, we're gonna ignore all of the noise in the background behind me. All of the individuals who, who, who's like, you know, calling me weak. <laughs> All right, but I appreciate that. Um, but we want to start today. Um, let's start with. Uh, I don't even know. Let's where start with going. Fanny. Let, let's start with Fon uh, Fanny Willis. Yeah, Fanny Lewis. Yes, and Fanny Lewis. Fanny Lewis. You know, it's, it's kind of disappointing now that uh, the you know the judge came down with a decision. Basically, as to me, it was a split decision. Basically, allowing her to stay on the case, but she had to get rid of um, the prosecutor. Had to get rid of prosecutor Wade. But what's interesting about the decision, even the judge quest questioned the veracity of both individuals. Uh, so, due to all of this, now he has given Trump, the former President Trump, an opportunity to appeal his decision. So therefore, this whole case is just being delayed at this point in time. And it, and, and it has been a comedy of errors on uh, Miss Lewis's behalf. Uh, I think, you know, one could question her judgment uh, and they are and they're right to question her judgment. And knowing that this was one of the high profile cases regarding such an individual, you had to make sure that your eyes were dotted and your T's were crossed. And, and now, and it's just, and, it's just, and, it, and, and, and uh, I'm just speaking just to see that, you know, you have 
a successful African American woman who has really worked hard to put herself in the position. Mm-hmm. And now all of the work and the hard work she has done and, and the things that she achieved, now people tend to question question it. And you know, it, it, in life, man, you could do 99.9 things correct. But it's that one percent, if you do it wrong, it could just it could just drown the other 99.9%. So, you know, the media is going to do what they need to do, but we as individuals and as people, we have a support an individual such as uh, 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 of her who, you know, there was a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake that was so detrimental to the case that she bought. But because of who he is, uh, that's why it has really... I don't think it's just who he is, John. I think it also has to do with the state that he's in as well. Because yes, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the mm-hmm. state has been predominantly a red state. Um, right. And, you know, it, it wouldn't be surprising that the judge was is a Republican and left the gate open for that level of appeals as well. So we could also question. Uh, but I think the judge made the right decision. He made the right call on it. I, I think so, but but you also leaving the gate open. And what what Ms., what Attorney L- Willis is trying to do at this juncture with this opening is try to move up the case and make it quicker against Donald Trump. So she wants to move it up within the next uh, or so. Uh, again, good evening um, to all of the villagers out there who was who has chimed in to watch the show. Uh, thank you, uh, Star Girl. Thank you, um, uh, Benave Brutus. Uh, right. Um, and 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 and, and it, it it does allow for. Um, well, we hope one of the things is whether you're for Trump or against Trump. I want this trial moved up. I want this trial to happen because. I'll give Dr. Bryant this. Certain aspects of Trump's life Mm -hmm. is in the media way too much. And Trump has dominated the media Mm -hmm. over the last eight years. Mm -hmm. Um, Both for good things and bad things. Right. Right. Um, and uh, so you kind of want to, to either get rid of him or make him the, or, or get rid of the things that surround him, right? right? Whichever one of those two things that you want to do. And mm-hmm. you're, you're, the effort by uh, Fannie Lewis um, to move up the trial and every other thing that's happening um, is around him. Um, and speaking of Trump, John, uh, there is a. Um, Wait, before you switch, do you think they're going to aim towards dismissing this case? I think that's I where think they're aiming for. Absolutely not. I don't think they're going to dismiss the case. They can't, they can't dismiss the case. The case, is too, the case is too high profile, and the crimes committed mm-hmm. in the eyes of the prosecution. Mm-hmm. It's not relevant to the prosecutor, right? So mm-hmm. there was no prosecutorial misconduct in the case, Correct. right? So no, they will not um, dismiss it. Dismiss it on those. They can replace all the people around it, but the case will go on, right? Um, and last night I was watching uh, CNN. And the whistleblower um, was on CNN talking about how she uncovered the the case. She's another attorney, and she's a Republican, and she blew the case wide open. Um, We're talking about uh, Miss Willis's case. Yes, with Mr. Wade, the 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 relationship um, between the two, you know, the fiscal relationship between the two. And she she was, you know, in essence saying it wasn't a political move. It was a political move. But it was a hundred 
is 100% a political move. Mm -hmm. You can come on television and say whatever you want, but it was definitely a uh, political in a way to try to um, save his behind. To save Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in the same way, same vein that Tish James um, uh, push to remove Andrew Cuomo was a political move for her to run for governor. Um, yeah, but that was short lived. Yeah. That was like maybe a week or two. That was it. She didn't uh, run for governor. She didn't no, run for governor. No, she did not because. Uh, yeah, after, you know, it looked bad. After you have him removed the very next week, or you, you're pushing this the very next week. You have an advertisement that you're running for governor. No, nah, there was no advertisement. I saw no advertisement she was running for governor. I don't remember if there's an advertisement. It was. It was a video that she'll remove people. Yeah. Yes. There was something for Tish James. Yeah, there was something for Tish James. Yes, about, there about was. Running for governor. Uh -huh. I don't know if it was an advertisement or a news clip or. Yeah. Was, and she's was, running for governor. She did running. say that. It was, was short-lived. Right. Um. So at the end of the day, uh, the young lady is wants to run for Fannie Lou Lewis's Fannie Willis's uh, um, seat position. Mm -hmm. um, position down there in Georgia. Um, right. You know, one of the things that one of the things that I question is the racial makeup as well. Of what? Of what is what is really happening? I think Willis was stupid. Wade was stupid. Um, but I also think that um, as a such a high profile person, mm -hmm. you you know, I think it was racially motivated as well. I, I, I you know, I, I think it was just wasn't, I don't think it was just it was just um happenstance that you uh, you know it was a white woman that went after him, a Trumpian going after a black. But also his wife had part to do with it too in the divorce decree. So bringing up all these extra things, that's what actually... Um, well, she, the, 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 the lawyer that brought it to light furthered the conversation around what was happening, right? So um, to me, that was an issue. I, I want to talk about um, the legal issues for Trump. Um John, do you think the billionaires are going to bail him out? No. Why not? Why don't you think the billionaires are going to bail him out? I think the billionaires are not going to bail Trump out to pay for his legal fees. I don't. I. I don't believe that. You know. But what's interesting is he asked. He asked one million people. I guess one million. One million of his supporters to help him. You know, if this guy raises raises that money, you know, to 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 do the bond, I'm like, wow. You know, and, and this is uh, this is what Donald Trump does. He use other people's money to effectuate <laughs> his position in life, status in life. You know, I was um, watching something wh while we were talking. Um, uh. Sorry. Um, the the wait. I'm sorry, hold on one second. Let me just read this text out loud relating to the show. I've come to the conclusion that I must continue my work as attorney general. Ms. James, the Democrat, wrote in a statement barely six weeks mm -hmm. after entering the race. That's the race to become governor. She said that she wanted to finish the job on several important investigation cases. She said that under her purview. She said that on December 9th, 2021. So that was her response for dropping out to off the race to become um, off the race to run for governor. So uh, one of our listeners uh, sent that to me in a text. Um, good evening, family. So nice to see you, Roderick. Congratulations on becoming a grandpa. Yes. Finally, a girl have joined the soldiers. Enjoy your, your new bundle of joy. We do. I do. I, I do have a girl, um, an older girl. Um, I, you know, more or less adopted a young lady. Um, my son's older sister. Um, I've adopted her, become a father uh, figure to her, and she's become my 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 little daughter. So technically, there's a girl already there, but biologically, yes, this is the 
first grandchild. And so um, mm. my mother is God upset. My, my, grand, my mother's upset because she said in, at, a, at a young age, uh, she's now a great grandma. So she. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's hey, the um, I said, uh, as uh, long as she's able to see her, it's a blessing to actually yeah, be oh, able oh, to. Hold oh, on oh, one second, Kay. Um, can I send you a link? Uh, Kay Gordon, that is. Can I send you a link? I want to talk about the dominoes, uh, for a little bit. Can I text me? Yes, if I could send you a link, if you're able to come on for about 10 minutes to highlight us on the. New York Domino League is something I want to start highlighting um, on the show. So um, let me know if you're available for about 15 minutes to talk about the domino world um, out there and what's going on in the league and how people can participate. So text me and I'll send that link. Um, sure. All right. Awesome. Andre, can you just text me a link for, for me to send to Kay so she can come on and talk a little bit? But going, going yeah. back... Going back to Donald Trump, right? Let's go back to Donald Trump for a little bit. He's crying broke. He's not crying broke. What? Oh, no, he's crying broke. Yes. He is. I have a two-year-old. I'm a grandma. Oh, okay. Right. Congrats, Monet. Wait, wait, Monet says, are you saying that you have a two-year-old and your grandma? Is that what you're saying, Mon uh, Monet? Are you saying that you're... You're now a grandma for two years. Which one? We just want to make sure. She's a grandma. She's been a grandma. Mo Monet's a grandma. Mo, you know your grandma. Yeah, that's what she's saying. She's a grandma, but I'm not sure she's saying that she have a two-year-old child. Plus she's As a well, right. She's no, 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 no. She has one child, a son, who has, a, I uh, think, a, a year. I think the child is a year and a half. Maybe, maybe two years. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me try to get you that link, uh, uh, KG. Let me see if Andre sent me the link. <clears throat> oh, she says she's a glamour, Monet. Right. Andre, can you send me that link, please? Send it to All right, glamour. Right. All right, glamour. Um, oh, he's two. Got you. Okay, your your grandchild is two. Right. Um, awesome. So Donald Trump is crying broke. And every news media. Um, Tish James, right? Tish James is trying to get that money mm -hmm. out immediately. Right? Right. Um, what do you think? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Yeah. One is, listen again. One is trying try broke and trying mm -hmm. to raise the funding. Mm -hmm. Tish James is saying that um this james is saying that I, we need that money now right i want is trying to raise so who do you think is going to win this battle i mean trump doesn't have he's not he doesn't have liquid cash to put up right. uh to secure the bond there's no one who really so, hey, no one to John, secure. John, do me a favor can you explain to our audience <laughs> what does it mean to secure the bond in terms of paying the bill, securing the bond? What does that mean? What secure the bond? But basically, they, they want some collateral or something. Uh, they want a collateral to secure his bond. You know, for his, if it's $450 million, uh, if they, they're basically saying in the event he does not pay, we will pay this. But they want to have some collateral in order to base them giving him a certain amount of money. So that collateral could be his buildings that he has in Westchester and Manhattan. So we can use that as collateral. So they don't even that, want that from him. But, but like, that's not yeah, that's a yeah. problem. No, season, no, no. But the, their season is asset. What, so if they want 454, but again, they, they want collateral for him to pay the money, right? But how is he going to pay the money with the collateral? That's what I'm asking. They want collateral so the bond can be secured. So he has to put up a piece of property or whatever he has to give the 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 bonding company enough confidence to foot the entire bill if he fails to pay it. Okay. 
And how would he pay back this bond? Basically, he would get the the way he did the way he would relinquish the bond is either he would pay off the debt. Mm -hmm. You know, the bond is just there to allow him to go to uh, the um, appeals court to secure because they want to make sure that that money is there. When if there is a if there is if the if the decision is affirmed, they want to make sure Miss Carroll has the money, which she does. He bonded that one. It was ninety nine. It was ninety one million dollars. He bonded that. But this one is a, a large sum. He doesn't have the liquid cash. So he would he could do a combination of cash and property to secure a bond for the four hundred and fifty thousand. So basically he's saying is I'm parking my four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to allow the court to 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 allow the court to give me uh, to allow me to proceed my appeal in this case without having me to pay this money within the 30 day period of time. So this pushes the can down the road until there's a decision is made. Once that decision is made, if it's made in, in his favor, that bond is relinquished and with everything he put up, it goes back to him. But if he loses and he doesn't pay the judgment, um, within 10 days at that point in time, the bond company would be responsible to pay that lump sum. And that's the risk they don't want to take because of his track record always, you know, <laughs> basically uh, swindling, not swindling, but uh, not paying, you know, not paying his bills. So and filing bankruptcy. Yeah. So he, he could file bankruptcy on this, but I don't think he's going to file bankruptcy. I think it will be, he might be able to get a, if I would, but, See if I was Trump, Trump can get five, five um, bonds. People, everybody secure them with a hundred million dollars. But what property they would use? They would use the one on Fifth Avenue. Would they use the one in Westchester? Would they use the one down on Forty Wall Street? So he has property to to uh, use as collateral to to uh, assume uh, this. Not to assume. For him to continue in his legal, um, his legal odyssey. But one of my questions, though, John, and I think the audience wants to know as well as the world is, is, is the value of any of those properties that the the equity in those in those properties are they enough? Right, which could also be a fear of the bondsmen. Of right. course, it, it could be, you know, you have Trump Towers, you know, uh, you don't know what the cost is on that. So I, I think Trump has to put cons put a package together that includes some cash and some real estate assets. I think he might have to put up about $150 million in cash and then the rest maybe use his property in um, Westminster or he can use his property in... DC, he can group that together and give enough collateral to a to a bonding company that makes them be, feel secure to underwrite this loan. Good you know, it, 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 it's kind of exciting. You know, you, you know, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, in Westchester, um, if if you drive by um, um, right there across the Whitestone. They used to have uh, the Bally's. The um, now uh, it's Bally's. No, it used oh, to say wait. no. It used to say Trump something. On golf, golf club. Mm -hmm. Golf club. And but now it's purchased by pa Bally's. Yeah, no, it doesn't say it anymore. So I'm, um, you know, which is uh, Bally's purchased it. Bally's purchased it. Okay. Yes. Oh, all right. So here's Spicy K. Let's give her a couple of minutes so she can come on and tell us a little bit about the Domino League. What's going on in New York? All right. So let's just bring her on and we get back to uh our our conversation. Uh hello. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. 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 So this is this is the famous if if you have never met Spicy K, uh every Monday night you have a little special dominoes and uh, everything about um um, dominoes that you want, some some live music on, on, on Monday nights, every Monday night. 
But then she's also, y'all. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Her name is Karen Gordon, but everybody calls her Spicy K um, as the nickname. Uh, Karen, tell us a little bit about your the New York Domino League and tell us your role. Okay, thank you for your introduction, Rudy. So I'm currently the secretary for the New York Domino Association that's held at 1663 Ralph Avenue in, in Brooklyn. Basically, we have um, six teams vying for um, a top four spot. Actually, my team, Crystal Kings, is the defending champions. And currently, we have lost three <laughs> or four. Or, currently, we have lost three or four matches, which is not looking good for us. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell us a little bit about, um, so there's six teams, and where are these teams located? Where are they, where, where are they from? Well, there's one blood. It's a mixture of um, guys from New Jersey right. and Philadelphia. And trust me, they are wreaking havoc. It's their first year entering the tournament. But uh, like I said, it's a mixture. And these are guys that have been playing in the tournament for years. And they decided to combine a team together um, with Jersey and Philadelphia. We have, of course, Crystal Kings. Um, that's from Brooklyn. Well, we do have a mixture. When the going gets tough, we, we, we do stand for out-of-town players. Robbery, mm -hmm. highway robbery. Where are these players coming from? Tell the world where they're coming from. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's just Florida, just Florida. Florida we might have a, a from player or two from Jamaica, Jamaica coming okay. in soon because we are down in a hole right now. Uh-huh. And... and, mm -hmm. and they, uh, go ahead. So then, yeah. then you have high voltage. That's a rich kids team, and they are wreaking havoc. Also, we have the grade two five six, led by Soji and Hopi, and um, a, a whole entourage from different players from different as far as Hartford in Connecticut, Bridgeport, Connecticut. You name it. There's um my former team, Rising Stars. Which I'm the, I I I was the co-founder I was the founder of Rising Stars from 2009, and um, I, I turned it over and joined Crystal Kings in 2014. Then you have Franchise United, and Franchise hails from Atlanta, Georgia, but most of its players are New York based. Um, Did I miss out on the team, Rudy? I, I honestly I don't uh no I mean over the years the teams have to, the numbers have changed you have different teams uh that have come on from all over Connecticut um where tell us about where you have these players from for coming through the New York Dominant League where where did they come from Like I said um Philadelphia mm -hmm. Connecticut New Jersey Florida New York which includes Brooklyn Bronx and Queens all right. Um, and the great tie-on is from Staten Island, so don't forget Staten Island. <laughs> and Staten Island. Uh, and, of course, the U.S. is upstate, um, closer to Canada. Right, right. Exactly. And he represents um, Team Franchise. Okay, so I, I, let's tell the people about the culture of dominoes and why you think the league is so important. Tell us a little bit about the culture and, and expectation. What What is it like on a... What days do you guys play this league, by the way? What what what, what days? This is a Sunday tournament. Um, 99.999% Jamaicans. We are trying to get other Caribbean-based um players involved. All right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have entered quite a number of leagues over the years, including um the Bajan League, the St. Vincent um league. I, I have a I, I I can play the St. Vincent style dominoes as well as Bajan, uh, which Rudy is is famous for as well. He 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 has entered a team in the Bajan League before. All right, uh, Black Rock was still there. Black Rock. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So tell us about the culture of domino. Why is dominoes so important to the Caribbean diaspora overall? I mean, we we play almost every night. Why is this so important in the Caribbean diaspora? diaspora um and why you you would want people to be involved especially in the new york domino league well for the lazy persons or the person that um that that, that have ailments like myself i used to be a, a, an avid netballer back in jamaica 
with the likes of um, teams like Walgrovians and Jet Setters. But ailments, you know, I, I decided to get lazier and join something that I just go sit around the table. That's a board game called Dominoes. And um, right now, it's it's really a male-dominated sport. And, you know, I, I, I am very happy to say that we have quite a number of females right, that are joining yeah. the sport, doing very well. And for the first of this season, New York has fielded a, um, a, a female team. And in, 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 in October, we went to a three-way tournament in, in Georgia, where we defeated um, the, the Georgians. And uh, we came second to the Florida ladies. And of course, in, in January, where we have a New York, Florida rivalry for over 30 years, domino rivalry. Um, the first time we had put this team together, we defeated the, the, the Florida ladies. And these are big, bad ladies. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I want to go back to the New York Domino League for a minute. You play every Sunday. T tell us the style of domino that you play on Sundays. All right. It, it's called Open Code where you can talk the game you you know my partner's hand and vice versa right but so the opponents have to figure out what we have and likewise we have to do the same when i just got into the sport i did not like that open code because it seemed like it was talking and i love my mental games but getting to understand the game it's fun because it's very difficult as much as it's open um we're I know my partner's hand, he or she knows my hand, but you know, we're trying to figure out the other 14 dominoes and where this seven lies as opposed to where that seven lies. Um, that is good. And, and, um, you have traveled, where have you traveled to? New York have traveled to around the world to compete with dominoes. And, and tell us some of the big top players in dominoes. All right. So, um, we have traveled to, of course, Jamaica, Canada, Cayman, England, Atlanta, Florida, Washington. I'm trying to remember. And um, rest their souls, the, the great Leroy Brown, who passed away um, in the COVID. You have um, Derek, a very close friend of Rudy and myself. He was more like a brother to us. Um, help me, Rudy. Um, yeah, what, what, <laughs> it's just a wide range. And right now, we, 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 all, all right, big up to the cats, ladies. I see you, ladies. Big up to the <laughs> New York cats, ladies. To Shura, I see you guys, our vice captain for the cats, to Shura Williams. Um, so yes, Rudy, we, we have a number of greats within us, and of course, I am to boast. One of the greatest right now, the phenom, the young person, the young pearl, Earl, who is creating a lot of damage all over. All we have gone to England, all the places that I've named, he's been there, and he's just dominant all over. Um, Hopefully, let me tell you, I, I hope that dominoes become as big right now as cricket. You know, they gave cricket now. You know, everybody's making a big deal. Not saying that dominoes is not. But now that, hey, they have a spot that is going, you know, people are going to travel all over to come and see, oh, cricket in, in action, I hope it's the same with dominoes so that now the competition can, who knows, go somewhere live so you can stream it, pay-per-view or something to that extent. So I hope that it gets that big as well. Yes, Joanne. Actually, when I, when I um, entered the New York Domino League, that would have been in 2008. One of the goals and the missions was to enter in the Olympics. Okay. Right. That has not yet been fruitful, but we are still uh, gearing towards heading there. And um, this is now a new um, management team that we have for the New York Domino Association, including myself, Sports Billy, who is the, the president. Mm -hmm. Um, Solji, who is the vice president, myself as, as the secretary, my assistant, Stephanie. We have, um, Kevin Gibbs from New York, Jersey, from, um, from New Jersey. We also have Patrick from New Jersey. 
we have professor who's the disciplinarian and um the, the 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 head for the disciplinary committee that would be sampress so um collectively we're really trying to put this together um right now we, we just got done our letterheads which would be sending out a few letters for sponsorship very soon and you know we'll be taking it from there um there, there's a just to for john um there's a little guy in his boy who plays <laughs> this sport so we want to tell john tell john about this little guy in his boy Although he, he's a pain in our side. Tell him about the little guy. He's, he's we call him Starboy. No. I, 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 we call him Starboy. I don't know, for, which is self-proclaimed. <laughs> you know, when I beat him, he's actually boy boy for me. Right? But, <laughs> but trust and believe, he has learned um, the, new, the, 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 the Jamaican style domino. And he has dominated it very well. And he's very lippy. So sometimes we have to tap him on the lip. With a, with a six love or two here or there to show him that Jamaican still rule. But trust and believe, he's a great player. Um, the World Domino Federation, which I'm the president of, and the, 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 I, I guess the ultimate goal, New York Domino League, the Connecticut League, um, and the Bayesian League, what is, tell me one goal, um, one goal of all of these different federations. What are we trying to do? What, are, what, what is the purpose that we want to do very quickly with the dominoes? Well, basically, I, 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 I'm thinking, you know, that there are different entities right now. And I'm thinking that, you know, at some point we will come together as one to make this, um, the, 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 this dream a real a dream a reality in taking it to the Olympics, you know. I, I I am still trying to head there, and um I heard that the wrestling is no longer a part of the Olympics, and I'm thinking we should slip that dominoes into the wrestling arena. <laughs> All right. Um and, and hey, 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 Rod, hey, Rod, hey Roderick, I, I you know, just you talking about the Olympics. I just want to say, you know, to a young lady Lauren that went to school with my um. My middle daughter, she just got invited to Paris to compete in the Olympics for fencing. Nice. She's one of the top rated fencers, African American girl, top rated fencers. Uh, and she attends Harvard, uh, Harvard University. Yeah. That she is just got an invitation. Yeah, she just got an invitation. I, I, I love that. I love that. Um, you know, you know, congratulations. I love to see when, especially black fences. We had one that went to uh, Brooklyn Tech. I just want to finish up uh, KG with the, just mm -hmm. asking you, tell us where, if somebody wants to play dominoes uh, and they're interested, is there, I, I know about the World Domino Federation website, but where else, where can they find? So you have the World Domino Federation, their website to get in touch with dominoes. Where else can they come? So tell us a little bit. Where can people go if they want to learn dominoes, learn the sport? Just very quickly so we can let you go. Well, um, you know, during the call, there has been a site. There's a site that's called jamdom, J-A-M-D-O-M.com. And um, it has been active for quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. And um, since the COVID and persons weren't able to go out, the site just blew up. And until today, I, I, well, I've been online for about six hours today, actually. If oh, you have cool. nothing to do, it's very contagious. So, you know, um, you are, there, there's French, all the style dominoes you could think of. You have three-man control, four-man control. You have the French. You have the open code. Um, you have the cross the table. And you have um, partner dominoes. Right now, as we speak, Rudy, I... I Bushwick Mac is outside waiting on me because there's this new spot where we the domino tournament on, on okay, a Sunday. Wait, wait, hold on, KG. All of the domino. Yeah. My name is Kumbaya. Kumbaya. <laughs> Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Do you have a, um? You have someone wrote um. Uh, my Haitian peeps are still looking for that match. Oh, um, I'm very very <laughs> us about monday night because mitsuka can have that match I'll all right tonight real quick all right so of course i'm spicy k it's called spicy monday it's at 16 general avenue each and every monday it's more like an after work jam so when you leave work and i mean most people have working um in the morning so i'm there from 6 7 p.m 
and until you say when until okay. you say when so the <laughs> earlier spicy k spicy k yeah spicy k there's dominoes um there's um card games i, I have the, 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 the famous curry cow foot the famous curry cow foot that if I don't cook it on a, a Monday, it's no point in me going there That's on a Monday. <laughs> Wait, sorry, tell, tell me to put Matsuka's uh, comment back up, Andre, real fast. So tell us which is the team that Mitsuka can come out and play against. You and I are both part of that team. What is the name of that team? Say again. Oh, the, is, uh, the, 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 the classroom. <laughs> ah. it's, called, it's actually called I Love It. You know, you know, we love it. We love Domino so much. We named our team. I love it, and it's a vast amount of um number of players, which consists of both the females and males. And trust me, the females they have their practice at five forty-seven East ninety fifth every Wednesday, and they are kicking the male butts on a Wednesday night. Trust and believe. We have so many venues. I'm going to sixteen sixty three Ralph Avenue. That's where um the the Sunday leagues are held. This guy started up something just tonight, so I'm going there to see because uh, <laughs> on the flyer, um, it's a seafood Thursday, and they had some dominoes there. So I'm taking a guys there with me right as we speak. Um, just to say, Mitsuka, uh, on Monday night, I will call you for your Haitian piece. The classroom will play against your Haitian piece. Hey, but there's you can only speak English, so no sac passe, no not. <laughs> You know, Nabule out there when you play. But on a Monday night, we can go by Spicy K and get it involved. Spicy K, I want to thank you for joining us. And hope people come out what is it, every Sunday at 16th yes. Ralph and every Monday at 16 10 Ralph Avenue. Ralph Avenue to come out. Free entry, all night, open bar, you name it, it's all there. All right. So come on and enjoy yourself. Thank you so much, Spicy K, for joining us. And thank us. you so much for having me, Rudy. Thank you, John and Joanne. Have a pleasant evening. And right. see you at the Olympics, okay? Thank right. you. Thank you. You know, um, I, I I love the game. Everybody knows I love the game of domino. The yeah. World Domino Federation pushes dominoes uh, internationally and letting things happen in a number of leagues nationally. And one of the, the, unfortunately, what I cannot get is for everybody to come together and um, work together with the domino. I think if we were able to do that, it would help to push it some more, but, and the New York cats, by the way, um, Joanne is all females team. And, you know, you come out, bring the Haitian style and have your own, I don't know what name we'll name you, but we'll find a Haitian name for you. Um, that, you know, yeah, we, John, we have nicknames like sexless, misbehave, Ruby reds, um, Radam, you know, you know, and all the. I don't the, know what yeah. name you would give me. That's that's. No, 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 no <laughs> weed smoking, Doctor Bryant. No weed smoking, Doctor Bryant. Or no, 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 gunslinger Bryant. Gunslinger. <laughs> <laughs> gunslinger Bryant. Yeah, she'll get her name. But they play like like she said on Wednesday nights. They have the practice. You come out and 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 play and enjoy the game. And you start, you know, you play and you learn. Um, you learn what is happening uh, in the world of dominoes and play. And, you know, it, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of fun. And and we need well, more fun around, yeah, you know, yeah, people are yeah, too yeah. serious. You know, dominoes, I remind people, dominoes allow you to exercise your mind and think strategically. How That's do you true. Think? You know, if, if you're not willing to think about when you're playing dominoes, you lose and you can get frustrated. But we, let's get back to what we were talking about. We'll finish up with Trump. Um, the, Bob Menendez. This is another mm -hmm. issue that I'm having, John and Joanne. Bob Menendez announced today. That he's not, run that he's not running in the primaries. As a Democrat. No, no, no. He's not running. He's a Democrat. He He's said not, he might run for independent. No, wait, hold on. Okay. That's not what it is. It is kind of correct. But what it is, is if he's exonerated, he might run as an independent Democrat. I don't know what an independent Democrat is, but might run as independent. Andy King, obviously, who's the front runner right now for... Um, Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Mr. Justice Sarah. 
um, 547 East 95th. So if you want to play dominoes on a Wednesday night, Wednesdays and Fridays, right? You, know, you guys don't do Friday nights anymore? Sure. Um, the question is, Andy King was concerned, would this be another Ross Perot of 1992 if he was supposed to run as an independent Democrat? Not knowing what that means. What does that mean? He's not running as an independent Democrat. He's running on the independent line. That's, what that's exactly what I was saying. He's not so running as an independent right. Democrat. Right. He's exactly running on the right. independent right. line. Right? Now, now, just that, that's thing. what I said. What the, What in the world would you say I'm running as an independent Democrat? No, you're running as he an independent. He didn't say independent Democrat. He said independent. No, no, they said independent. No, he said he's going to run on the independent, independent. line. Right. So... Would you do you think this would be another Ross Perot? You know what? No, it's not another Ross Perot. So you because, don't think that he would hurt the Democrat and the Republican will come in? Um, do I think he will hurt he, you know what? I stand corrected, Roger. I think he would if he is exonerated, he would definitely pull votes. From the Republican, definite no. From the Democrat, Democrat. Right. he would definitely pull votes from the Democrat, and therefore give the Republican a better chance of winning, because you have a presidential election. So it would definitely give him a better chance of winning. So I stand corrected. He would definitely pull votes from the Democrat, because if if Bob Menendez is exonerated. You know, Bob Menendez, if he's exonerated, he might even pull it off. I think, I, 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 I think, you know, he's very well liked, right? Very, very well liked. Very well liked as a senator. You know who he, who he reminds me of? Of, uh, But, you know, he, he never got into such a scandal like this. Uh, Alfonso D'Amato. Uh, Alfonso D'Amato, yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a good retail politician, Bob Menendez. Um, you know, I I I I think, I think, um, I agree with you, right? I'm always concerned, and this is the problem that I'm having that you and I speak about, John, all the time, the divisiveness in the Democratic Party. Right. If you've decided that you're going to step down because you have to focus on your legal mm -hmm. uh, legal component, why split the votes? You're not going to win. You're three candidate, three strong candidates on a ballot. It's well, who says you, 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 you? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How are you going to say the man not going to win? If that man is, if Bob Menendez wins his criminal case, Bob Menendez will win. John, that race. Let, let me explain something. To you. As an independent, let me explain something to you, John. Go I, ahead. I've seen Go it happen all the time. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut is a union strong state. They're all union right. strong state, right? Right. Especially the major city. Right. Unions back incumbents. Right. Are back the, a party. Republican or Democrat, but they very rarely back an independent or an outside third party. They don't need. He don't need. If Bob Menendez wins, if Bob Menendez is exonerated, you will see. Even if those, it's man, it's not about. Okay, fine. You think it's the unions with their support? It's the people. Bob Menendez will have the people, and we ha he will have the biggest soapbox loud i mean you got to understand the history of that man and what he has done for his community i mean you know it, it will it, i'm telling you if he's exonerated if this man is exonerated from his case bob menendez has a strong possibility of winning as an independent I, we'll see uh i i i, I but first I, I, he has to first he has to get through his case which is very difficult especially when you got a rat who just who who, uh, who 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 just turned 
So you know what I'm saying? So it all depends. Bars, what about, especially when you have gold bars in your house, right? Hey, hey, bro, bro, just because you got gold bars does not mean that you got them in some kind of illegal fashion or way. It doesn't mean that. Just because you have, uh, just because you have gold bar does not, uh, 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 does not uh, connotate that he was engaging in some illegal activity. Some people like gold, you know. And it's like some people like stocks. Some people like bitcoins. Pay me in gold. The way the dollar fluctuates with inflation, yes, I want gold. So there's you nothing know, wrong with that. Yeah, and and not to mention, John, we failed to mention that he had beaten a, uh, a case already when it for inappropriate um monies um and he had already they, bought the, they, they bought the case against him it was a hung jury it was a hung jury it was 11 people not guilty or we either nine people not guilty three guilty or was 11 people not guilty one guilty that's why the feds didn't bring the case again. And they were pissed off at him. They were pissed off him that they lost him because they thought they had him. Yeah, but see, if I, was, if I was Bob, I would have done what Russell Simmons did. When he had all those allegations, I'll see you later. I'm going out of the country or you'll never hear a word from me again. I'll be the, I'll be, you know, I'll still be a representative, but I'll be quiet. So uh, let's go back to Trump for a minute. In the last couple of days, Trump had made several comments that were crucial. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Brian, right? He made two comments. One, he spoke about the bloodbath. If um, he lose. If he were to lose. And the second one was that Jews would not li don't like themselves if they voted Democratic. Yep. Right. What is your perspective on those two comments, Doctor Brown? Hey, could you logic? Could you explain that again? Could you could you explain that? So, so the first one is the word bloodbath, right? So he he basically said former President Trump and his allies are aggressively pushing back after Democrats and critics seized on his comments that there will be a bloodbath if he loses the November election again. That's a direct re reference to January 6th, right? Go ahead, um, go ahead. Trump, Trump, obviously, I don't need to go. That's basically what that was about. And his, his, his people are saying, hey, let's not make that connotation. But that, but that is his comment, right? Um, it, the, the remark. Uh, right, 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 right. Asking Dr. Brian. If, uh, no, 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 no. Let's be clear. And, and Democrats, and we all want to be clear on this. The context in which it was said, basically, he was making a reference that the automobile industry, if he's not uh, elected or whatever, it will be a bud black because of the, uh, the the tariffs or something like that. So that's yeah. where it came in, you know, and, and, and you can't take out just like the Democrats wouldn't want it. You can't take out bits and pieces to basically. But that's what happened, right? And is the you is poor choice of words, right? Because so it it's clearly that right? Bob Bath was said was said in the context of him talking about the auto industry. I, absolutely, but the word brought back terrible memories. Yeah. I agree. I, I I agree. He he. I, I agree. And but you know what's interesting? You know, sometimes with the former former president, though, sometimes I think he does things on purpose to Get ignite his base, to mm -hmm. ignite his base. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, and the second comment that I brought up was that he stated that if Jews were to vote for the Democrats, they didn't like themselves or they hated themselves or what, it, it was negative um, to how Jews would view themselves if they didn't vote Republican. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Bryant? Let's go back to you and then we'll come back to John. About hmm. his comments, like I, I see his, the rule. part of his constant rhetoric, right? This is all part of the rhetoric that he uses to, like John said, um, ignite his base. But what are your thoughts? I think it's also very ignorant too, 
very, very ignorant. I understand he wants to get attention. He wants to stare up. He wants to do all that. But it also shows how ignorant he is in his word choices. And this is who um, will be, who represented us internationally. And this is who people are, you know, he's trying to get people to vote for him again. He hasn't learned anything. He also mentioned a couple other things he mentioned about immigrants as well during this week, um, uh, which wasn't positive as well. So everything that was coming out of his mouth was negative, period. But that's what he stands for. So I'm not surprised, but I, I thought he would have learned from his mistakes, prior mistakes or whatever, Hey, you know what? Let me choose a better sense of word, especially since the last time they connected. His base might only hear bloodbath and not hear the whole comment of everything. They might hear, hey, you know what? If he don't win, because there's a lot of crazies in his base. So, you know, that that's like a whistle that you blow for all the nut crackers out there. And unfortunately, he continued to use that to get people in, you know, riled up to say, hey, he better win. He better do this. He better do that. So, um, but the, the, hey, by, hey, the Donald Trump, by any means necessary, I will, I will use any means necessary to get back into the White House. That's my man's strategy and his philosophy. Yeah, Eddie, I agree with you. To call all his crazies And that's the thing. So now, you know, they might not hear a automobile. They might hear, oh, blah, blah, let me go and get my gun. And, 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 you know, I there's, there's, a word, there's a word in the English dictionary. Niggardly. A what? Niggardly. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what you look at me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Blacks got upset with the word niggardly because it sounds too close to the N-word. But the word niggardly means stingily done, mm -hmm. right? And the choice of word caused this politician to have to step down because of the poor choice of words. Mm -hmm. The Democrats in is jumping on the word and say, see, he's still up to Mm -hmm. Whatever he's up to, John. What are your thoughts? You you started out with some of your thoughts. The comments on the Jews. The comments on bloodbath. Karen has a you know, uh, thing. Sorry, she mentioned okay. only immigrants he cares for is Switzerland and Poland to purge black and brown. And Eddie wrote also his strategies are a product of Stephen Miller. Trump is too stupid to think of all of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me tell you something. Yeah, and let me tell you something. That comment that you're talking about, that's what that's what scares me about Trump. Trump does not scare me because you know what he is. He tell he will tell you what he, he does. But Donald Trump is someone he's, he's he's a business person and you can really cut a deal with him. What scares me is people like Stephen Miller, Bannon, Sean Hannity those guys who have his don't ear. Forget, don't forget Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson is dangerous Tucker too. Carl, Tucker Carlson. These, it, 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 these are white nationalists mm -hmm. who believe in making America great again, which is a trigger word for let America go back to the way it used to be. Nativisms. The, you know, one good example, one, 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 one good example to me is when I watch, um, with Leonardo DiCaprio, um, 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 shucks, that movie. Uh, 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 no, um, catch me if you can. No, not catch me if we can. We're, we're, we're with Daniel Day. Daniel Day was in it. Um, it was about the nativism's uh, come oh, oh, so gangs of New York. Is that is gangs that of New York? Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York. You know, well, you know, and they talk about greater, 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 um, greater Jones, great, great Jones. I think the street down there, all about the natives, man. And this is nationalism. They feel that the minorities have overtaken 
um, the mm -hmm. white population, and therefore, and, and now have you noticed that the 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 trigger word now is DEI diversity? Yes, yes, quality yes. inclusion. That is oh. the trigger word. Mm. Now everything that you know, and, and DEI basically came out of the whole Floyd um, uh, situation. Now it's tied to affirmative action. Yep. Now it's not. It's not even three sixty one. It has taken one eighty turn. Yeah. Yeah. Because but, the thing know, is John, now a couple know. of states are removing, you know, any funding to schools. Look, yeah, Alabama, Alabama, Alabama has done that. Yep. yep. And you know, any John, state. John and Joanne, I, I, I was, I found out something. So, so there, there there's a, there's a prisoner from, uh, I forgot the state right now. That's escape. That escaped. Mm -hmm, that killed two officers. And he's a white supremacist. I did not notice John, but what? he the number one and number eleven that he has tattooed on his face. The one stands for A, and the eleven stands for the K in the alphabet, right? For Aryan nation and white supremacy. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. So and so now oh, I this, is this the is this the is this the guy who escaped from the what you call it? Yeah. Yes, he said he may be involved in in, yeah. in, in two homicides. He yes. he's a he what what is the Aryan Nation person? Yes, Aryan yeah. Nation, white supremacist. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 to me, I mean, wow. I'm gonna, I want to go back to MAGA for a minute. Also, make America great again. Last last week we talked about. Uh, not last week, maybe the week before. We, you know, we spoke about white privilege. Mm -hmm. Making America great again is that everybody's happy in the, in the eyes of blacks, or maybe it wasn't in the show we were discussing, but I was having a discussion. Mm -mm. Where this is your massa. You're happy with like what's that movie? Help the help is that the name of the movie? Yeah, the help. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We're, we're, we're talking about like the black housekeepers are happy and they're fine in their place, and that's a murder being great again. And making America great again is the Jews becoming Republican. It's the bloodbath. It's the I don't want. Muslims or immigrants to be in the United States. Mm -hmm. I, I want things to be how they used to be. I, 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 um, black when they were on plantations and everything. Yes. And so, you know, and yeah, it, 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 you know, it, it's psychologically all, all those are trigger words to stroke people's fears yes. and to make them feel that separatists. They can only exist or they can only be safe in a community or a country that uh, th that are people who look like them. And that's who they would they would feel the safety and security. So Trump is former 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 President Trump is smart because yeah. what he's doing is he's stoking the fears of individuals. And the way he does that is by making certain comments and and saying certain words and phrases that really corroborates those individuals' ideologies and thinking. They he says he says what he says is what they want to say, but they can't say it because they're afraid to say it. Mm -hmm. You know, but they can do it. They can do it. You, they can live vicariously through former former President Trump. And, 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 you know, and, because, and what is it? There, there's there there's some good people on both sides. There's some good people on both sides. Um, uh, you know, and he has made some certain comments. Uh, his 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 friend who stated uh, that he did not um, that Donald Trump asked him for support 
in the election uh, in right. 2016, no, in 2020, right? Asking for support in 2020. Right. Putin was reelected in Russia, making him the longest serving leader in uh in the uh he want to follow his footsteps that's what he want to do and, to be honest with you yeah i think so i think i think like you know what america i hate to say it, but if donald trump became president again he want to find a way to undo the constitution i forgot mm -hmm. what number amendment it was where president can only serve two terms like mm -hmm. he's going to argue that he didn't serve two consecutive terms <laughs> and if, and oh, that's his next argument yeah you know that's his next argument yeah but now nah, that's not gonna happen <laughs> i didn't serve and first so of all, it ain't gonna happen because he. Well, first of all, it ain't gonna happen because we ain't gonna allow him to get this term. Yeah, well, I hope gonna... people go out to vote, uh, right? Because a not... lot of people say, "Hey, we're protesting this, we're protesting that." Um, the first thing he said is, "Hey, we getting immigrants out of here." So the same people who are protesting against the war over here, the war over there, or whatever. He said, "Hey, all that you gotta go." Uh, um, Joanne, speaking of that doc. He said that he's standing firm. I know I made this argument two weeks ago. He said, I am standing firm with Israel. That's what he said. Trump. Trump said that. Hmm. Right? Right. Right. So uncommitted. People say that they have issue with Biden and Palestine. Right. Listen to Trump's words. That's his buddy. No, that's what I'm saying. No, what I'm saying, listen to his words. Yeah. If he's standing with Israel, means that he doesn't care about Palestine. Right. Hey man, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you 100 percent but they don't, they don't, they don't they, you, you hear, especially the Muslims in Michigan, they don't hear this. They hear old Biden is a Democrat. You know, it'll be far worse. It'll be far worse under Donald Trump. Yep. Far worse. Right? And not even so much Donald Trump. It's people. Yep. It's damn people. Who you people have to be with. careful about what they're... You're, you're literally turning people off of Biden. And he, the man said it in his... But you know, but, 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 but Roderick, you know, one thing I can say that Trump did point to our attention. All these major cities that have people of color who are in political positions, high political positions, why do their cities still look the same? Yeah, I have a problem with that too. You know, why, it, it, it should be, you know, things should have changed. Because y'all guys were at the helm. And, 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 and Trump made that. And that's a point. You know, sometimes, man, we have to, we have to take the criticism and we have to be open-minded and look. And it's, it's sometimes we need to have a period of reflection of where we can be and where do we want to go. You know, I, I'm, you know, the way Albany is treating the, the, the landlords now here throughout uh, New York, man, you got a lot of small homeowners, you have small business people, you know, my father may rest in peace, you know, he bought property. He was a landlord. You know, a good friend of mine, Dennis Giddens. Uh, he uh, was a small landlord. And these draconian laws that impact these people from, from you know, it, it, it's it's like a, um, it's like a, not a curse, I would say. It's like you, you're getting, you're getting hit for becoming a, a for, 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 for success. For working hard and buying a piece of property and then you know renting it out and becoming a landlord you know and also with this squatter crap man yeah when you buy a house a woman bought the house for a million dollars you can't get these people out yeah you can't get these people out I, and the I, bottom, I, and the thing is the mortgage company wants their money the court system is in such a backlog let me tell so, you, know, John, yeah. the court system is not in a backlog. The court system is, and the New York City law, New York State law, city law, they, the laws are absurd. How can you force and tell me that you could stay on my property, no rent, for 30 days, once you're there for 30 days, 
and I can't collect rent, but I'm going to lose my property, but I can't get rid of the person so I can collect my rent. I understand right. that it's a crisis. They pay my mortgage. Right. If this person has to stay here, then tell the mortgage company not to set aside the mortgage and back and what is it back? What is it called when they put it at the end, John? Like put it add it on to the end, like they did with COVID. Yeah. Like they give you a, um six to eight months of no mortgage, but then it's put at the end of your mortgage to extend your mortgage, which you didn't have to pay. Don't right. do that. If you allow a squatter to stay in my house, then for the time that the squatter is there until you decide that the squatter is getting out, you pay my mortgage. Right. Tell, or tell the bank that Mr. Daly, Mr. Sampson, Dr. Bryant are not eligible to pay mortgage. Right. You give me, you give somebody six months and no rent, paying my mortgage for six months. The banks will be in uproar. The government will be in uproar. But you, the little guy, will suffer. Um, another charge, uh, sexual harassment charge came in the news uh, lately. Eric Adams. Mm -hmm. uh, backdated to 1993. See, I have a problem with that. Yes, yes, Monet. Absolutely. You get killed for trying to live the American dream. I, my mother and I were talking. About mm -hmm. and that's what she said. Tell us what your problem is. You know why? This man was a senator. He was a Brooklyn Borough president. Now he's a mayor. Why didn't they mention this prior? Because he was in public view prior to that. So why wait 30 years later to say, hey, you know what? This is what happened. It last year they had the whole case. Last year, the last two years, nothing. So why now? Why now? So that's my question. When he was a Brooklyn Borough president, why didn't she say something during that time? When he was a state, she was too busy. She was too busy writing books on how to be litigious, how to how to start lawsuits, how to do this. That's what she was too busy doing. That just it just you know what. You 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 wait all these years to, to just destroy someone's life. No one's saying that. Um, you know, people who engage in such activities, they deserve to to be prosecuted and be sued. But at the same time, you know, there is no due process because the first thing everybody says, well, you gotta resign. Well, you know, I mean, there, there, there has to be more to it. You know, there has to be much more to it. I question. You can't just have some of these allegations. You just can't just have these allegations. You know, I'm just looking at even the facts that she said. Really, all and and the person did all this, and you didn't notify anybody all these years. Who did you notify? I mean, come on. I, I, you, you know, John, I, I find that my mother. Um, and thank you, Joanne, for speaking out. Right, Dr. Brown for speaking out. Because we we as men we speak out. We sometimes look like we were being a sexist. My issue is he moved up the ranks of the police force. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think he retired as a lieutenant or a captain. I don't remember what was his final rank. And you waited until the statute was about to, to expire. Go. Not only that, mm -hmm. But you waited until you thought he was worth millions. Mm. Mm. Good point. Good point. To come out with an allegation that he asked you to perform oral sex for the return of securing a job issue. Not that you performed it, actually. Or he forced you to do it. But it was sexual misconduct, which it is, because it's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But I question 
30 plus years. And wait till he's at the, the those are the points. You wait till he, the, the fact that you think he has money for you to gain, because back when he was a lieutenant, he wasn't gonna gain gain the money, but now and the statute of limitations for the crime is about to fit expire. I don't know. I don't know, John. Um, I don't know if she's telling the truth or not. Yeah, I'm not saying, and and that's the thing. I didn't say that. Hey, it's not true. It's not not. It's true. It's not true. I'm not saying that. But why wait 30 years? You know, why wait that long? You could have said something earlier, if if it was a problem. I gotta be careful how I say that. If it bothered you that much and it really offended you, and it's true. If you were wrong, yeah, right? if you're wrong, right? A hundred percent. That's the point. Uh, you should have said something when he moved up. You should have said something when he became a senator. You should have said something so at least there is an ongoing track record that people will hear you. You know, it's not the first time she's saying this. This is not the first time. You know, it it is true. You know, she mentioned this so many years ago. And if they have to go back to investigate, how can, what proof would they have? That's that's the thing. You need a paper trail or something. And you know, a lot of people are saying different things. And because it's the Me Too world and everybody's getting a lawsuit, um, you know, just just thinking about that. The, the other issue is it's your word against mine. Right, and it's your word against mine, and yep. you, you know who's more believable, right? True. I I can honestly tell you, Doctor Brian and Doctor Samson. I don't remember who the hell I was dating thirty one and a half years ago. <laughs> I remember one girlfriend, two. That's it. I remember my current wife. 31 years ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? I remember my current wife. And I remember uh, Nicole. In between that, I don't remember who. So to, to bring this case up, right? And some of the people I met in 1993, 92, I don't I have no idea what they look like. I don't know about you guys. I remember people I, I, I no, I'm not saying I don't I I'm not saying I forgot everybody. I'm just simply saying that I don't remember you. You understand what I'm saying, John? So you bring me up on the chart. I don't even know who you are. Mm. And 31 and a half years ago, I am not the person I was 31 and a half years ago. Absolutely. Even last year, you're not the same person. Right. You know? So if I if I were to continue down the path 31 and a half years ago and doing mm -hmm. the same thing now, I understand. But I don't I have no idea. When I was at 31 and a half years ago, I, I, I might have been a lot bolder with women. Going straight after what I want. 31 and a half years later, I'm settled. I'm this. Or even if I'm not married, I'm not the same bold, aggressive person. Mm. So what are you seeking 31 and a half years later? So Star Girl wrote, I asked the same question, why now? I believe she is getting paid to do this. I do not condone bad behavior, but something needs to be done about these years of allegations. Absolutely. 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 I mean, I'm not I, I, I'm not defending Adams. Yeah, because we don't, you understand? Yeah, you're not with the individual all day, every day. You don't know, but... Um, it, it is a little strange. 
It's just strange. You know, I, you know what? Um, it's either I've never, I've did never it known, or didn't. I've never, you know, I, I know the mayor. That. I know the mayor personally. I've known him for a long period of time. And he's always shown respect for women. And you look at his administration uh, and then the high regard he has for women. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think this ever happened at all. I just think this person, if you, if you, you got to understand who this person is, she stalked, she has commenced many lawsuits and, yeah. you know, even trying yeah. to write a book right. on how to, how to, how to, I mean, come on. She wrote a book on how to win a, what is it? How to win a, a, a sexual harassment, um, allegation suit. Yeah. If that's the case, then why didn't she bring it? Huh? I mean, you know, I mean, come yeah, on. She wrote, she wrote a book on that and, and, and she charged him and somebody else. She actually charged somebody down in Florida. Um, in the book, uh, she did it. Uh, somebody down in Florida, she made the charges of sexual harassment. Right? How to, how to win a sexual allegation lawsuit. Oh, okay. That's what she wrote the book on. Um, so it, all of these things surrounded her, you you, you question it. Yeah. I, but Nave, I don't know. I don't know. But Nave wrote is either Eric Adams did it or didn't stop making excuses. I don't think anybody's making excuses, right? I don't know that any of us on this show is making an excuse, right? How can you put a time on emotion? He could have told her that that as a as a put down as she took it as a personal insult. All of that could be true. All of that could be true. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying put a um. Right, I'm just saying. I'm not question, saying that at all. The question just becomes the timing of it, right? The timing of it and what she has done, extemporaneous to that. Mm -hmm. At that's, the time it happened. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like at that point, you know, in 1993. He wasn't at the uh, uh, the height of his career. You could have spoken to his superior, right? He would have been terminated. Question, blah, 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 all those different things. That's all I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? I'm saying the it, same thing, too. Right. It, it just makes you question what it is. Right. Correct. Right? Um, and the fact that she has lost lawsuits as well um, doesn't make it look good either. Um, the U.S. submitted draft resolution to U.N. calling for Gaza ceasefire. Nice job, right? So the Secretary of the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Wednesday the United States has submitted a draft resolution to the U.N. Security Council that calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza that's tied to the release of hostage held by Hamas. So again, it goes back to the Democrats are working with uncommitted to to stop the, the the fighting in the Gaza Strip, and also help to release our Jewish brothers and sisters mm -hmm. who have been held hostage over there by Hamas. Okay. So kudos to the United States uh, trying to work with the UN to. Um, to, to stop what is happening um, in Palestine and Israel and the war. You said over, over 32,000 people have been killed in, 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 the, in, in the Gaza. Yep. And then you're talking about 32,000, and most of those are innocent lives. Most of those are innocent lives. Babies and... and, and... Yeah. Not, not just babies, just innocent people. Who had nothing to do with the war yeah. at all. Uh, nothing people. to do with Hamas. Yeah, Hamas is, nothing you know, Hamas. Hamas. Right, nothing to do with Hamas. Hamas killing their own people, Israel killing some of them. Um, you know, that's likely, that's that's crazy. Um, what's going on over there? Um, I, I'm never a fan of war. I'm only a fan of a just war. Well, I, I want it to be equal to. You know, for example, we we spend a lot of time talking about Hamas. We spend a lot of time, but there's a lot of wars happening all over the world, and and so we actually, yeah, yeah, innocent people. Look at the young lady 
Even in the United States in Brooklyn, New York, somebody turn you down and say, no, not interested. Get stabbed. You know, the two, the, the set of twins who actually got stabbed for turning and rejecting an individual. So, you know, it, it's senseless death, senseless attack. I understand their goals. Like the guy on the, the guy on the train, like the guy on the train, you harass this man, him and his girlfriend, whatever it is. The next thing you know, you got the audacity to have a gun. And then a guy takes the gun from you and shoots you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just, you know, I, 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 um, you know, uh, uh, what about the, 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 the six, uh, there's a 61 year old man, uh, who was punched and killed. Drop, drop, yes, drop, drop. at the gas station on and um Clarkson Avenue. I usually yeah. go to the gas over there, and you always see tow truck drivers, you always see yeah. cars double parked, you see you haul oh. or whatever. It's ridiculous for ten dollars. They yeah. end up um, you know, uh I want to say uh one one of uh, an acquaintance of mine was shot. Um, I, I it was in the news in New York where the police was chasing a guy and there was a shooting and somebody got shot. The the mechanic this week? Yes, he's a friend of the family. Okay. Uh, yeah, but you know what's interesting? What's interesting in that whole scenario, it seems like the two people that that young man was chasing after, they tried to rob him. They did rob him. Yeah. They did rob him. You know, but that, that young man who got shot, he got shot twice, uh, one in the chest and one in the arm. He died. No, he oh, didn't. No, 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 the mechanic. He's no, he didn't, he's, right. yeah. he's, no, he's he's a, he's a friend of the family and somebody who I've known. Uh, he worked at the shop for a long time. I think that he's alive before that happened. Um, yeah, he, here's something very interesting. I was, uh, you know, something interesting. A man killed his best friend in Georgia. Sixty-one year old man killed his best friend, forty-eight year old best friend, for thirty-five dollars. About that. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's similar to the guy who got who got killed for ten dollars. Yes. Yeah. So there's no price. People are completely disregarding. And and John and John and Joanne, um, um, we talk about this all the time, and I'm bringing it up again, taking this opportunity to thank you, my the the audience out there for listening i'm tired of bringing up that we need to be in outrage mm -hmm. about the black and black crime yeah I'm tired of not killing each other right white people are not killing us physically killing us as we are killing ourselves true police are not killing us like how we're killing ourselves. Mm -hmm. In all of those cases that we have just discussed, it's mm -hmm. all black and black crime. True. There was no racially motivated crime. Right? And, and people keep arguing about police. And we on this show, the village is not saying that there's no racially motivated crime. The village is not right. saying there's no police brutality. But what we're saying on the village, and I take full responsibility for that as the host and the CEO of the show, we as Blacks are killing each other disproportionately more. Mm -hmm. and we need to be in outrage. All over. All over. Brooklyn. We have Congo. We have all these other places, why are we eliminating people like this? Why, why are we eliminating ourselves and then we're hey, blaming others? Come on, let's, man. Let's, it, it's let's, just ridiculous. Let's it's go to commercial and uh let's go to commercial and then we will be right back. Andre. Yeah. Footprints Cafe now offers Caribbean flatbreads, available in 11 mouth-watering flavors, including favorites like jerk chicken, curry chicken, honey garlic chicken or shrimp, ackee and saltfish, garlic cheese, and more. 
our flatbreads are satisfying and can be enjoyed by the entire family. So make it a flatbread night at Footprints and enjoy the fusion of flavors. These flatbreads are so good, you might just have to fight for that last piece. Good thing there's plenty more where that came from. Get yours today from any of our Footprints locations. Want to enjoy your flatbread at home? Then order on Uber Eats and get it delivered right to your door. We'll see you there. Call Howard Housing Solution today for all your real estate needs. Sellers, we can get top dollar for your home. And our vast network of professionals can facilitate your move and help you purchase your dream home in another state. Buyers, we have a pulse on the market and can get you in a home quickly. Property owners, we can manage your property efficiently and allow you peace of mind. So why wait? Call Howard Housing Solutions today at 646-825-5560 for your sale, purchase, or property management needs. Conveniently located in East New York, Brooklyn, you can come to us at 577 New Lots Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, or we can visit in the comfort of your home. Call Howard Housing Solutions today at 646-825-5560. Howard Housing Solutions. Real estate simplified. Want to get your personal income tax, business corporate tax, self-employment tax, quarterly tax, payroll tax, or sales tax filing done professionally? Yeah. Call U.S. Spirit LLC, 718-676-0519, and take the worry out of your personal and business life. Tax compliance issues should be left to the pros. So when you want your business to grow, call the pros, because a successful business matters. U.S. Bear LLC also handles accounting, bookkeeping, business startups, consultation, real estate, and many more services. Call U.S. Bear LLC, 718-676-0519, and ask for Howard DaCosta, CEO, to book a one-hour evaluation at no cost to you. Take remote control of all your needs, and U.S. Bear LLC will follow your lead. Want to work but don't have a social security number? Yes! Find out about getting a tax ID to pay your taxes. Call U.S. Bear LLC or log on to www. Dot Team up for success. You know, um, Dr. Brian, uh, you know, you're you're talking about the the twins. Uh, yeah, man, nineteen years old. Yeah, one of them was failing uh, uh, for uh, you know twin girls. Um, Investigation: A man made unwanted advances at his sister's inside of Delhi and Fourth Avenue in St. Mark's and Park Slope. When they refused, the man fatally stabbed the one 19-year-old sister in the chest. Her surviving twin was also stabbed in the arm. Why we can't accept rejection, dog? Say that why, again. Why, you know, why if a woman tells us no? Or a man tells us no, it's a problem. What 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 is society doing, which is causing us that issue? That you, if you ask a man or a woman out, if you say something nice to somebody sexually, um, wait, if you say something nice to somebody sexually. Yeah, yeah nice. You're yeah, nice. When I say that, I mean like you're a good looking woman. Um that's not sexually. Well, it could it could be depending on how you're looking at it. We're quick. The point that I'm making is that we're quick. I'm not talking about being perverse. Let's get it right. I'm not trying to be perverse. Um, we're quick to anger. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we we ball certain things. In this case. I, I, you know, I, you know, in 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 the er, in the late '90s, I was at Ditmas Park, uh, John. You know, in your old district over there at uh, Ditmas Park Railroad, I saw a guy um, ask a woman out. Literally, try to talk to her. He was on one side of the fence, and mm -hmm. she was on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Like, what's your name? And whatever other words of endearment. The girl was like, thank you, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not interested. 
He turned around and he cussed her out. This guy with the 19 year old. Um, I was when I was younger and I was hanging out with Jay Z. We go someplace and we go to one of his concert. I was I, we already gone inside. The guy tried to talk to the girl, wouldn't talk to her. He shot her in the chest. On on Route Avenue, uh, right by Foster Avenue, there was a club called Warehouse. Yeah, the guy, sir. Right. The, the guy tried to talk to the girl and he shot her in the chest and killed her. What is when was this? Huh? When was this? Uh, this is the early, very, very early 2000s and maybe. Not early, very early two thousands. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was like when they used to talk to teens. Like teens were allowed to go. Like at some point, in that right, right, right. Um, why we can't take? Why do we have to resort? What are we teaching our people that we have to resort to to crazy violence? What are we doing, John? What is it? What are we doing in society? No we're respect. We, we 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 have no respect. It's no respect for human life, human beings. Just people, man. We we are just so cold hearted, so callous. It's, it's just horrible, man. It's just horrible, my friend. Horrible. Yeah, I I, I I find it to be extremely problematic that we have blatant disregard for human capital. Blatant disregard. We have to learn to love each other. And that's, you know, not for nothing. That's why I believe in God. Hmm. That's exactly why I believe in God. And that is why I will never tell anybody to be a Christian. I will never tell anybody to be a Muslim, a Jew, or anybody else. However, I will tell everybody to believe in a higher calling. Because a lot of these people who are doing these things have no fear of God. Now, I don't know where you go in the Muslim faith if you die and you, you don't follow the Quran. I don't know where you go in the Jewish faith if you don't follow the Torah or any other religions for that matter. But they all teach you are, if you get a basic understanding, that you got to love. You got to love your neighbor. What's going on that we don't, that we just think the box stops with us, John? You kill a 19-year-old because she re she told you no. I don't even care how she said it. She could have told you, hey, Janice, your cousin's saying hi, John. Right? Lester. All right? What makes it okay, John? Where is the fear of God? It's a problem. Um, as a woman, Dr. Brian, mm -hmm. what do you what 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 goes through your mind when you see something like this as a young lady? You got to be always cautious because you don't know where someone's psyche is. So depending on where you are, they were in a store. That's another thing. If you reject someone and say, hey, I'm not really interested, you got to always keep in mind, are they going to attack you? Or are they not going to attack you? Because that is something always you have to be worried about, especially on public transportation. That's why I don't take it. But anyway. Transportation again. I, I think we're throwing that in. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, just the seriously, because you don't know what they might have, what um weapon they might have on them. And it is a fear that females have, and some males might have the same thing. And if you're walking by yourself and hey, you're surrounded by more than one individual and you're saying no i'm not interested or whatever that is a fear too so it, it it's very it, it's john said it earlier people walk around fearful
but you always have to be on guard at all costs. Even my daughter, when she takes the train or she's walking or whatever, nowadays, I don't know who's who. That sometimes, hey, don't don't look at my daughter like that because you're going to get mama bear to come out and mama bear will knock you out. So it, it's just like, hey, it, it, it is a different. Or she, might pull, or she might pull the gun out, Roger. You know what I'm saying? Just I finally agree with the Second Amendment. What's your what, what what do you what do you say to males, John? As because it's primarily males that do that. And sometimes women are can be Aggressive. disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just it, that's not that doesn't cause for violence. So what do you say to your males, to our male counterparts, John? You know, I I, I would just say if you if you're honestly going to give a uh, attempt to give a woman a compliment and she responds or she doesn't respond, she responds in a negative manner. The best thing to do is my mother always to kill him with kindness. You know, you have a nice day. I'm sorry I disturbed you. You know, and just keep it moving. That's it. Kill him with kindness, man. Make them feel kill bad. About about the Make them feel. Flip the script. Flip it. You know, I I, I like I, I think that's that's a, that's a uh, you know I just I just want to compliment you you know on your looks, but I understand, you know. I don't mean no disrespect, so I apologize and just and keep you it moving. Have a lot of females who won't take a compliment because the thing is, many times when it is innocent, um, it's fine. But then you have more negative than innocent. That hey, if they don't accept the compliment, they end up throwing something at you. They end up attacking you. They end up, you know. So it there's a lot of that too. That's why you might have females who's always on guard. You know, I was, I was I was at uh I went to a store. I was getting uh my kids play baseball on weekends, and uh the woman was having a good day, and she was dance dancing up a storm in the in the deli, and the guy got an attitude, and the guy was like, Ma, you gotta watch where you're dancing. And I'm sitting there going, she's just dancing. He said, I want you to dance too close to me because my wife ain't going to ask no questions. Is it really? She ain't, she's not even talking to you. <laughs> and your wife is just going to walk into the store and attack her? That's the psychological issue. I um, want to finish on two topics. Uh, one, first of all, uh, uh, happy belated birthday to, uh, for me, I'm just saying some birthdays, to uh, my son. Uh, Stefan is yes, also yes. Uh, a father. He's so he's he's the one that made me a grandpa. Oh, happy birthday! He's, it was last week Thursday. I was on the air to say happy birthday. My friend Pepsi, um, uh, what a birthday! Uh, my my friend Barbara Sanders is and Yes, happy birthday, birthday, Barbara Sanders. You know, I just you know, I, I, I know I missed a few, but I remember those. Uh, my brother's having a birthday coming. Happy anniversary. Um, and happy birthday to Annette Hall, uh, my cousin. Um, so say that. I want to finish up on two topics. Wait, before you do that, they actually arrested that guy that was convicted that bust out of jail. They found him. They arrested him. Oh, that's okay. While we were in here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, good news. The white supremacist. Oh, my God. Chuck Schumer defense called from Israel to replace Nathan Yahoo in a meeting. I support that. John? Uh, Netanyahu, I think prior to that incident in October, he was on his way out. Uh, a lot of people say he, there were signs before that he didn't do anything. He just used this as an opportunity to, to, to change his political, uh, create a political opportunity. Who knows? I don't know if that person, I don't know if he's that devious, but I never, I, I, I never liked him um i never did like his politics but most of all the way he 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 treated uh, president obama you know and, and, so and, and, I, i'm not a fan of and, and 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 biden you have any thoughts on the subject uh, dr brian because no, i'm going to the I next can't hear less about that man wow. and that's the truth. thank thank you that that, that was <laughs> I, I was so looking forward to you giving him a more <laughs> A more doctor answer than more. Uh uh. Uh uh. 
Uh-uh. Haiti. Because Haiti. the thing is, he's he... Forget it. I want to finish up with Haiti. Nope. Mm -mm. I want to finish up with Haiti. Haiti is in chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, the murders, the killings. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Dr. Bryan? Educate John and I, Dr. Sampson and myself. A lot of people want to be in control. Power, power, power. Um, everyone want to be a leader. But the thing is, that doesn't mean you're going to be a good leader. You know, yeah. removing one and not having a plan to, to run the country is another thing. The biggest problem that Haiti have right now is where are all these wonderful guns coming from? Military style guns coming from? How are they getting it to Haiti? Here it is. You know, it's supposed to be one of the poorest countries, but they got most of the newest weapons. How is that possible? So, you know, when you think about it, it, it seems as though it is a setup for, for, like you mentioned, Roger, black and black crime. Because when you have military style gun, who are you attacking? The innocent people who are there, who's not eating, who can't get food, who's trying to get away, who can't sleep. But you have a group of people, you know, you have two different parties with walking around with gun, killing innocent folks. So chaos is all over. Um, it is interesting that I think it was last week when all of the Caribbean countries came together to say, hey, we need to do something about it. Because are we just going to watch a whole area get wiped out and no intervention sure. and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. They said they're going to send Africans down there. They said, you know, sure. Haitian people are afraid of having others to come in to invade because it happened before, you know, the bank was exploited where the money from the bank that was actually taken way back then created Citigroup. So now they're holding on to the past saying, hey, we have people come and say they're gonna support, but they keep taking our money. They keep taking our resource. They keep taking our gold. They keep taking this, they keep taking that. And it leaves us in a worse state than before. Hurricane mm -hmm. happen, things happen, people donate, but you never see it to the people. Millions of dollars come in, but guess who end up having it? It's not the innocent people who actually suffered, it's those in power. So that's the fight. I wanna be in power so I can fill my pocket. I wanna be in power so I can control this. I wanna be in power so I can build this land over here or that land over there, or I have my house in Miami. And many of the people who are in power before in governmental power, they're building in, in Florida, they're building here, they're building there, international, but none of the innocent people who the money was sent for receive it. So the fight for power is fight for greed, is fight for chaos, but when is enough enough? And when mm -hmm. Our people, our Caribbean folks, we're, we're, we're gun ho to say we're all Caribbean, Labor Day, everybody jumping around, music, 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 but no. Um, there needs to be some sense of order to see Caribbean mm -hmm. people come together to help put some order in that. If they don't want outsiders like um, international countries, but they will listen to Caribbean, you know, come on. So uh, uh, you think that CARICOM should step in and do something? Absolutely. Um, they, they met last week, but more needs to be done. Um, we're out of time today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I go, I I, um, I I know she's not on ear listening, but I could always have her refer back to it. Uh, you know, I consider, I value my students and, um, and I call all of them my parents. Uh, you know, their parents, I call them my parents. And so I value them. And I want to say a special condolences out to Ilan Witter, who lost her mother uh, this week. Uh, um, Ilan is no more than uh, 29. Um, I don't remember how Max was my student, but she lost her mother of cancer. 
And I just want to say my my heart goes out to you. Um and and you know, and everything else. Happy birthday to everyone that I missed. Um congratulations to Fawn and having your first born and making me a grandfather. And my wife and kids who are enjoying themselves watching champs. I uh, just say kudos to you um as well. Uh any last comments before I make my closing remarks? John. Dr. Ryan. God bless you all. Um, just be safe out there and enjoy life each day. Celebrate hard. Um, let people know that you love them because tomorrow's not promised to you. John. Bless. Just always remember that you are blessed, highly favored, and keep the faith. You know, awesome. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God is there. Continue to serve him. Uh, honor, whatever you need to do. Um, um, uh, so at the end of the day, just keep praying. And continue to pray for me because those prayers are working. They're keeping me here, uh, regardless of what anybody say. Thank you for watching, sharing, viewing, participating on The Village. We are dedicated to empower the community to live a healthy, safe, and financially capable life through education. Helping each one of us in realizing our dreams at any age, at any point, starting from today. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. And yes, star girl. Uh, once the information is known, it will be on, on my Facebook page. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mom says good night too. She's waving over here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.